want to set up right off the bat what is going to be this week's least funny running bit. Where did it even go? I can't even set this up the way I wanted to because things have gone so awry. This beautiful Watto needlepoint done by friend of the show, Abigail Noy, has fallen off from the sticky mounts on the wall. So get ready for Watto to have to try to reaffix it every two minutes for the next four hours. Great. What a good use of time and energy. Ah! Welcome to the George Lucas talk show warm up. This is just the warm up. The show hasn't started yet. I'm trying to make sure the audience is ready. Who here has ever been to a live TV show taping? Okay, I'm seeing some clap claps. I'm seeing some clap claps. Now, who here has ever been to the George Lucas talk show before? If it's you, say whoopee. And by say, I mean type into the chat because here is a struggle. We are live streaming, which means we cannot hear your responses. So if you want to show that you love the show and think it's very funny, you can type things in the chat, but you can also tweet about it on social media. And here are some hashtags that will make that ostensibly easier, better for us. I don't even know what the aim is with these hashtags anymore. One can argue they've now become a bit about a bit about a bit about something that originally was a genuine intention. <sighs> Hashtag Amira Bill Graf Oakley. Hashtag Portland. Do ya? Portlando ya? Like Lando? Portlando ya? Patrick. Patrick, I insist. Pat Patrick's Wi Fi uh, crapped out on him, so Patrick's actually not in the stream yard right now. I am at the loss for words. He has really left us high and dry in two ways at once. Hashtag Treehouse of Horror for the New Hope. You can't put the fucking colon in a hashtag. It stopped the hashtag. Also, what? Hashtag Amer Heather Grand Campbell. Hashtag the Twilight Saver Zone. Hashtag, how did I have a bad feeling about this get play? This is the worst they have ever been. And I'm not just saying this because Patrick isn't here to be criticized. I will repeat it when he comes back. Bryson, get these off the screen. Your first instinct was right. Don't make people look at them any longer. Let's start the fucking show.
George Lucas. Hello, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. Welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show. Hello, Watto. I uh, hello. I saw what you had to go through in the uh, in the cold open. It was brutal. I mean, why even have a producer if that is the product that is being produced? Wow. Oh, oh! I don't. I, I'll be good. I don't know what happened. I saw some comments uh, saying uh, ha hashtags were historically bad this week. Okay, you don't know what happened. So let's address the hat trick of mistakes you have yeah. already made. This There's week. one spelling error that I, I will own up to, and that's my fault. That is truly the least of your problems right now. One, hashtags were conceptually fucked and comedically bankrupt. Two, <laughs> your Wi-Fi crapped out. Yeah. Three, you didn't even know those were issues because you weren't watching the show. Because the Wi-Fi crapped out, which brings me back to point two, mm -hmm. which circles back to point three, mm -hmm. and the show has now started off badly because of the hashtags, brings me back to point one. It's a vicious, it's, a, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Yeah. And on top of that, we were already going to have to start this week's show on a sour note, Patrick, and, and yeah. you've added you've added a, a degree of bitterness and disappointment to, to the mix when we were already, we were already going to have to to reiterate some terrible news well it's a week of mourning yeah i mean welcome to the george lucas talk show you know what i mean that's that's par for the course that feels like tell tell people patrick. why it's sad george patrick right. patrick george is going to say it but you have to check your fucking attitude before george shares this bad news because you traditionally struggle to react appropriately during this type okay hold on okay back. okay I'm holding back a grin right now no, i'm not i'm not all right well uh for for weeks now for weeks now the uh, do you want uh wado do you want to go out and bring uh bring out grogizmo for this uh moment am i allowed to of course i think it's appropriate i think it's i'll i'll say this yeah He's right here. I'm worried about bringing him any closer to this screen. Don't do it. I do think it. you could do it. I think it's fine. Well, also, a bunch of the letters fell off his hat. <laughs> oh, no. So, wait. Make AIC. Make AIC. And I don't know what it means. Take it off screen. I can't, I can't vouch for the message. He's dead anyway. They took him from us. Well, no. Uh, Grogizmo lives, but we can no longer celebrate. Grogizmo through the magic of the Grogizmo t-shirt. Um, lawyers uh, asked uh, Planet Scum to take down the shirt. Uh, we won't say which company. I don't, should we say which company? We should. Yeah, say. I think we should. <clacht> Warner AT &T, Time Warner, right? Warner Brothers. The Warner Brothers uh, got mm -hmm. a load of what what was happening, mm -hmm. and uh, so I mean, so for those of us who already have the shirt. Um, you're lucky. You're lucky if you, if you if you ordered it. You're lucky because now it will never, there will never be any more of that shirt made. Oh, great! I will say this is Patrick has no idea what this bit is. No, I got this part. I got this no, part, Patrick. Oh, of course you got this part. I don't think he understands it though. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, he doesn't get why it's funny. Um, yeah. No, keep your HBO Max. They have Red Tails, and it's great. They have American Graffiti. They have more American Graffiti. I mean. It's a complicated world. I you 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 can't get rid of your HBO Max if you want to enjoy the the second and third installments in the American Graffiti trilogy. But the state of late stage capitalism is such that a simple billionaire can no longer make hundreds of dollars selling a T-shirt with three different pieces of stolen IP on. Yeah. Um. But I'd say let's let's get on to the happy part of the show, which is when we bring in our, our, our new our, our guests, our new friend. Yeah, Wado, why don't you let our guests know uh, how we like to introduce people? Well, I am Wato, the flying space Jew slash announcer slash warm up comic slash sidekick. 
But we do things a little bit differently here on the George Lucas Talk Show. In order to introduce our guests, I need the guests to give me their intros because we let the guests write their intros and then Watto reads them out verbatim. So may our guests please type into the private chat exactly how they want to be introduced. It can be funny. It can be serious. It can be a little bit of both, Mm -hmm. like Barry Levinson's Avalon. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, and you're laughing. That's funny. Why? Oh, uh, is that why you're laughing? Or did you think about the t-shirt again? No, no. Our I'm, still, I'm not happy. Dead t-shirt. I'm not happy about the t-shirt. I'm not happy. George. Yes. How is your week been? Uh, well, I mean, everything was thrown off <laughs> by uh, the, the t-shirt. Uh, 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 I, I know some people are commenting that I was going to bring bring uh, balance to the face, <laughs> but uh, I was not able to do that because I spent, not. I spent all week dealing with the the t shirt kerfuffle. Let's let's also say that if you went to belowthecollar dot com right now, you went to the Planet Scum merch page. It feels like a very unsuccessful go around. In Ocarina of Time. Why is that, Lana? Because it's the story of a dead link. <laughs> the number one shirt on the website is now a dead link. And what a surprise, Patrick laughs. At a joke about Link, a young really hero funny. dying. He laughs. It's really funny. The man who finds death funny. It's back funny. Pat. Cut more. It's funny. All right. Folks, I want to say something. I want to bring some light, some balance onto this show. Mm-hmm. And I want to say that Heather Ann Campbell <laughs> is a writer and podcast host. She writes Rick and Morty and podcasts for How Did This Get Played? She uses her middle name because Heather Campbell is a different actress who is nearly known in her Google image search results. I would like to additionally say that Phil Oakley is a TV writer and producer best known for his work on The Simpsons, where he wrote the much meme steamed ham segment. He also has worked on Future Ama. <laughs> I promise I read it verbatim. If there's a typo, that's on you. <laughs> Portlandia, Mission Hill, in his spare time, he reviews fast food and snack food on his Instagram account at that Bill Oakley, go go the grass. Give it up for Heather and Campbell and Bill Oakley. Hi guys, well, welcome. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, very good intros. Very well written. Very thoughtful and well considered. Sardo, Heather, have you ever met the other Heather Campbell? No, but her Nordic track was sent to my house. Uh, <laughs> in like the mid 2000s. Um, what did you do? What did you do? Did you send it back or did you keep sent it? Sent it back. Uh, mm-hmm. We apparently at one point we lived on the same street, uh, oh, but very sure. far away from each other. And somehow her Nordic track came to my apartment. Um, but I haven't met her. Oh. Do you think she's ever been sent anything of yours and kept it? I mean, I, I, she could have been sent it, but I can't imagine any human keeping the stuff that I get mailed to me. Like, but was there any, <laughs> anything you ever ordered that went missing that you didn't receive it? Think back. <laughs> um, no. Well, no. then she's. It seems like she's innocent. She's as innocent <laughs> as you. Case closed. We had to. We had to look into it, though. You know. Yeah, she was a she was a regular on the Police Academy TV show. Hmm. I think she was also on Seinfeld once. She's maybe. in one episode of Seinfeld. Uh, yeah. She plays Sheila in the episode The Package. And she also mm-hmm. has a special thanks on the I Love Lucy 50th anniversary special. Yeah. So she's doing the, pretty good. She's the Package good. sounds like the episode that Heather Ann Campbell went through getting the other Heather Campbell package. Yeah, Package. So, the package. I'm really yeah. thrown off by this photo following now. <laughs> Now, uh, now, Bill, I have a question about uh, uh, you have 
I'm always fascinated by uh, Heather. You have so much stuff in your background, but I'm first drawn to who is the fi the lone figure who's leaning against a pillow. Oh, that's me. That's that's me. That's oh you, no, Heather? him. Okay, yes, I that's see. you in the background of Bills. That would <laughs> yes. be that's, yes. That's, me. that's you, Heather, back there by the pillow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who do we, who do we uh, got? Who's leaning up against that pillow back there? Who's that little man back there? Next that's a that's a it's a, like a vintage engraving of a slightly fatter guy who looks a lot like me. It's a cautionary oh. tale that I keep back there amongst my snack food. Wow. Yeah, you, you keep him back there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I'm and not... Heather, Heather, who is your doppelganger that you have in a similar position in the frame? You have who is that back? To... This? Yeah. Yes. That's a that's a Gundam model that I built. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um I don't know the name of it nor the series that it comes from. I just like the way it looked and wanted to build it. Right. Yeah. And, what, and what is the backstory behind the keyboards? This is a regular segment on our show. I want to make clear that we just <laughs> ask people about stuff in their background of their brain. Well, I really like um, I really like mechanical keyboards, and I'm mm -hmm. uh, uh, super into like restoring old Macintoshes. So uh -huh. I've restored each of those keyboards and depending on my mood, I'll switch them out uh, to, to work with them and hook awesome. them up to my modern Mac. But uh, I don't do that for like podcasting and stuff because they're very loud. Sure. Like right. if I had to look up something. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Yeah. Clack, clack, clack. Clickety yeah. clack. Um, well, I, I am fascinated by the fact that you, you're both writers and you both chose to have a, a, a small figurine in the exact <laughs> same spot. <laughs> In your frame, I think that's not a coincidence. There's some there's some element of destiny. A and dyad, we, yeah, <laughs> a, a, a dyad in the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Now, uh, Heather, before we started, Heather, you you said that you had a lot of you had a, a Kylo Ren back there. Yes, I have. Well, no, not I mean, like not the whole human being, not the whole guy. Yeah, uh, right. but it, I, up in my, I have a like a toy. Mm -hmm chest up there i guess i could tilt this yeah, we'll see so you can see yeah. so up there i have like a toy chest with a bunch of like toys right off camera what i guess right. like i mean i believe you <laughs> there's you have no reason to lie about this about a partial kylo ren <laughs> it looks like heather might be frozen heather in uh, carbonite still <laughs> can i take this opportunity to tell you uh Watto has been trying. It's his New Year's resolution in 2021. Uh, I always wait to eat dinner until the show starts. That way I can write it off as a work expense. And I've been trying to pick food items that are honoring our guests. And of course, anyone who knows about uh, food that uh, uh, should be eaten on a live stream is very much up to date with the winners of each year's Steamy Awards. <laughs> and so I, in preparation, ordered uh, this year's number one in the pizza category, the Domino's Cheeseburger. But I also went and got the number one new item, the McDonald's Spicy Nuggets. But wow. then I also went and got the number one in the beverage category, Nico whiskey from the barrel. I will say this was surprisingly the most expensive of the three items. <laughs> so Watto is going to ingest all three during this show. That is a fantastic assortment of stuff you've got there. That like, wow. Every one of those things is top notch. Three number ones. Yep. Wow. Terrific. Am uh, I back? Yes, you you're back. Me? Okay, great. <laughs> Um, so let's, what was on that shelf that we missed? Because I feel like it went up there. You don't have to try to move the yeah, camera. Yeah, I'm not going to. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's, not, it's, it's not worth it. So I have a Kylo Ren helmet. Um, yeah. and it's the one where you put it on and it changes your voice. And then I also have a, a BB unit from Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. And a lightsaber that I built at Galaxy's Edge. And then I have, um, my favorite, uh, my favorite droid from the comics, uh, who's the murderous uh, droid named Triple Zero. Um, I love that guy, and that's my only Star Wars action figure. He's a good guy. It's a good one. So you got to go. You got to go to Galaxy's Edge. I, th I feel like a lot of people had the thought that you know it was so busy 
it was this big thing. And I think a lot of people thought, you know what? I'll wait. I'll go a year from now, two mm -hmm. years from now. It's so, there's such a big line. There'll be such a big wait, but you mm -hmm. actually got to go. And now yes. all, all those people who thought they'd wait, they didn't know that the world would stop. <laughs> right. It, right. It was a, a choice between waiting for the crowds to die down or unfortunately waiting for crowds to stop dying. Mm -hmm. We didn't know in advance that was going to be the binary. Yeah. Um, I, I did go to Galaxy's Edge two times and I loved it so much that I was like, you know, I should get a, um, a season pass. Like I live right. here near Disneyland. I'll get a season mm -hmm. pass. So in February of uh, of 2020, I bought a season pass to Disneyland that I never got, got to use. <laughs> I bought a year's worth of Disneyland. Did they refund uh, you or anything? Like, did you get any? Uh, they So they've sent emails to the season pass holders saying that they're eliminating season passes. Yeah. And that they are looking into how to provide compensation for the remaining months of your season pass. Sure. So whatever that means, whether they give you like a free ticket every month. I, or, I think that the translation to that is a dream is a wish your heart <laughs> makes. I think, uh, I think it's just one of those things where you just have to hope you have to hope and wish that they will figure out a way. Bill, yeah. did, you, did you get a chance to go to Galaxy's Edge before the pandemic? I did not, but I've been very interested in the saga of those special Coca-Colas that they sell mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, there's a whole podcast that I heard about a month ago about what ended up, like, I guess they just liquidated all those special round Cokes and they wound up, a lot of them wound up in a, like a Dollar Tree in Alabama. <laughs> and people, it's a really interesting story. And because they, there's so many, I guess, thousands of leftover Cokes that they can't sell there and that come in those special Mm -hmm. Yeah, like grenade shaped things. They just ended up uh, in a discount store in Alabama and people, because they're very collectible, people were driving from state, you know, hundreds of miles away to snap them up. So that's oh like, God. that's my only experience with Galaxy's Edge. Of course, I'd love to have some of those if they ever, um, if they ever become available again. Yeah. You want to try, but you got to try the, Ron, the Ronto Roasters. What else do we got, Wano? We got the Ronto Roasters. We got the, uh, there's the- I don't know, I haven't been, I was waiting. Yeah. These are very spicy, Bill. They're good, but they're very spicy. Especially yeah, especially with the sauce, with that mighty hot sauce. They're yeah. they're significantly hotter than your average fast food thing, which Agreed. they I, usually top out. Yeah. I wasn't expecting this much genuine heat. <laughs> <laughs> you keep going though. Just take a break. I Knock it down with a little bad. bit of Japanese whiskey. Yeah. I will. I'll use the whiskey before I start dipping the fries in the hot sauce. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Bill, how has um, how has getting fast food during the pandemic has it changed? Because I feel like I'm still seeing your Instagram stories. You're you're still going. You're still trying the new things. Is it? I don't know. Is it? Does it feel better to go get it because you're giving yourself a little treat? You're getting to go out of the house. You're getting to go do this. Or is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the question is. I don't have a, I, uh, well, it. Well, answer. I will answer some of the fragments yeah, of your question. Yeah. <laughs> that, that I like. Yeah. I mean, the thing about fast food is that it's at least that the, the chains are doing really well because they're yeah. drive-throughs. Like the drive-throughs are always much more crowded than they used to be. And I mean, that's like. So it's a little bit more of a a little bit more of a wait to obtain it, and you can't go right. into the place. Um, as far as the reviews that I do, I mean, it's the same thing where I just buy the item and eat it in my car. Yeah. Not that much different. Um, but I also right. am trying to increasingly during this time support local. Like on my Instagram story, at least once or twice a week, I try to go to local places, especially mm -hmm. like our our cart pods and, and food carts and stuff, because like they're the ones that really need the support, not so much of these these multinational corporations are doing great yeah. during this during this pandemic. So um, you know, there's a couple of new items that come out here and there that I review, but um, I'm trying to mix it up quite a bit. What's your top, what's the top pick you'd recommend? What's the during the pandemic, what's the local local uh place that you've been most impressed with that you want to drive people to not, well, in liter portland, not, not literally but just well, in terms of influence i live in portland so like oh, all portland. these places are, are local in, in portland like like uh, hit the spot burgers my favorite there's uh, is, is my favorite place probably of all but um in terms of places in la last time i was there hi ho cheeseburger in santa monica was probably the best cheeseburger 
I ever had from a place like that. Uh, fancy cheeseburgers, everybody knows my father's office is great. And I've been hearing great stuff about burgers never say die. And I mm. never made it out there before the pandemic. That's like in uh, mm. Silver Lake, I believe. But like, those are some of my top, the places on my list. Right. Uh, I want to make one comment and then ask one question. Uh, first, the comment. Uh, my glasses are literally fogging up. I think it is from the heat of the nuggets. This is not a joke. This is usually not an issue on this show. Secondly, a question for Bill. Bill, I have only been to Portland once, but I had one of the best sort of independent fast food type meals of my life there. And I want to know, as someone who is a dilettante to the food scene there, if this ranks up highly on your personal restaurant list or if Watto doesn't even know what the fuck he is talking about. <laughs> Watto Which, still dreams 10 years later of the original taco house. I think you'd be sorry to know that it's defunct. And I believe it's all gone out of business. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it, they've all been torn down and turned into other things at this point. Um, I never got a chance to eat there. Uh, and I never heard that much great stuff about it. So I, I'm sorry I missed out. Bill, you need to understand that we used to do this show at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in New York City. We did it at the UCB East. Then they closed it down. We did it at Chelsea. They closed it down, moved to Hell's Kitchen. We moved to Hell's Kitchen with them. And then Watto did a one-man show. And a week later, a global pandemic had started and the UCB was never to reopen. Watto seems to accidentally close any place he likes. <laughs> I'm worried that I might have single-handedly taken the original taco house off the map. It did happen around the same time that you ate there. God damn it! Wow. <laughs> Not too long afterwards. Jeez, wow. <sighs> um, Heather, are it seems like you have a lot of sequel Star Wars merch. Do you yep. do you like the sequels more than the original or more than the pre? What is your what is your Star Wars ranking? Um, I really like. The Last Jedi. So my Star Wars ranking off the top of my head. Sure. Empire, New Hope, Last Jedi, Return of the Jedi, uh, doing, Rogue One, All right. Force doing... Awakens, okay. uh, Sith, Phantom Menace, Clones. Wow. And, oh, Solo is like somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Right. And then Rise of Skywalker is at the very bottom. Yeah, sure. Oh wait, you were <laughs> counting. You were counting down to the bottom. That was in the. I huh? thought for I thought for certain you were counting down to your number one, Casey. Yeah. No, that was no, no, no. Oh, okay, was hold on. One to, yeah, to the I'm like this, this tracks. This tracks. <laughs> Empire is <laughs> Empire is flawed, right. and like now we're getting to the good ones. I mean, it's hard. You are you are counting up to the Watto movies, but now you're telling me you're counting down from the yeah. non-Watto movies? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Watto, you're in Sith, I think. I'm no, not. No, you're in clones. I, I, you're in clones. I, yeah. I'm yeah. in clones. I have the little hat. <laughs> I wear a little sequel hat. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, now, Heather, do you think, because, you know, do you think at some point, you, if would you jump at the opportunity to write a Star Wars? Yes, I yeah. um, I've begged my I've I've been like I would be a writer's assistant on a on a Disney Plus Star Wars show. Like I I right. I'm a nerd for it. Um, my you, got, uh, you have the chops. You have the chops. You know how to do it right. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. It clear, I think really with Star Wars, you need to know how to do it wrong, also. So yeah, I mean, oh, either way, I'm I covered. Heather, you have said that is, people do not understand that about Star Wars. You ding, can't ding, just know how to do it right. You got to know how to do it wrong. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's not Star Wars. Yeah. George always says you haven't really made a Star Wars movie unless people are unreasonably angry at you <laughs> as a person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's why you know when Force Awakens came out, I was a little crabby about it. You know, everyone seemed very happy with it, and then when Last Jedi came out and people started becoming yeah. furious, I thought, ah, oh, no, this is familiar. Yes, yeah, that's, that, that's the feeling. That's the yeah. feeling. You make a little space movie, and then uh, a bunch of uh, angry men are very angry. What uh, is the what is the angriest 
people have been at something that you guys have worked on? Is there a specific oh. episode or a specific show in general where you're like, oh, you guys, you guys got really upset about that one thing? Two classic animated comedies with notoriously true fan base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can certainly say that by for me, it was the uh, Simpsons episode where Principal Skinner turns out to not really be Principal Skinner, which in fact, somebody was just talking to me about today. Uh, it's a long story. You can hear on the DVD commentary, unless you want me to recount it again here. But uh, basically that one, I don't think we had any idea that people were going to fly off the handle so much uh, that yeah. they, as they did about that, because we just thought this is a retelling of the classic movie uh, story of the return of Martin Gare. Mm -hmm. which was an award-winning yeah. film in the 70s and a story I think that goes back to medieval times. Anyway, so we're just like, right. we're retelling that story with Principal Skinner, but um, people like, it causes, even to this day, it's probably one of the most controversial Simpsons episodes. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, Bill, and this is, this will be news to Watto as well, that Patrick actually had a, uh, a hashtag for this episode that was about that. Uh, oh, good. Wasn't that, the, wasn't that the the title of that episode? Is uh is that uh seem uh, the principal and the pauper? No, that's oh, no, a different one. Episode. Different one. Different one. Yeah, I no, you're thinking do, Seymour Skinner's badass song. Yeah, I wanted to do Seymour American Graffiti Skinner's badass. <laughs> sweet, sweet Seymour. Wow. Yeah, now, yeah. Now, this is a very long one. Now people, now the Simpsons fans, because I know originally the fr I, I think the first time I noticed people were angry was jerk ass Homer. That was the term that people online started talking about, mm -hmm. right? That was people were very angry that they felt that Homer changed mm -hmm. uh, over the course mm -hmm. of of over yeah. a uh, over a decade, over the course of hundreds of episodes. They were very concerned that a character had uh, changed, and they didn't like it. Uh, and they started questioning the legitimacy of, of people. People have cutoff points, don't they, with The Simpsons, where they say, I watch it till season number mm -hmm. X, and then they... Yeah. Uh, did, did, we, did you ever have hurt feelings? Does that get to you personally? Uh, I never... I stopped... Okay, well, back when I worked at The Simpsons, there was no Twitter. And there was no... Uh, there basically was just... You know, alt, uh, there was Usenet news groups, mm -hmm. alt.tv.simpsons. So we... Uh, uh, everybody stopped reading that. <laughs> basically, those guys hated almost everything um, uh, every from the third season on. And it, mm -hmm. it just became too depressing. So we just kind of like deleted... We just stopped reading it and had the it, uh, modem removed from the office. <laughs> and, and so I never heard anything about most of these episodes again until you know, five, 10 years ago when yeah. people started talking about them on Twitter. Cause like back in the old days, you just broadcast show out of the void, you know, right. unless a TV critic were to write about it and they don't write about it. new shows that have been on for years. Right. You don't hear anything from anybody. Tom Shales wouldn't come after you in season 11. <laughs> no, no. And so you never heard anything from anybody about what people liked. Um, and, and I never heard most of this stuff until 10, 15 years after I'd left the show. Mm. Well, well, this is a, a flip side question for you, Bill. Steamed hams, uh, you know, uh, the principal and the superintendent, one segment on one episode that has had a, a, an outrageously long tail is, yeah. is the opposite. Is now huge on Twitter, but has been like reclaimed only in the last two or three years. Yeah. Is that something you ever could have conceived of? That like Not those, at all. No. you know, whatever it is, 35 lines of dialogue would become like, this this tableau rosa for people to reinterpret. No, it's extremely surprising. And like I said, I never heard anything about that segment for 18 straight years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until it's like uh, people, you had no idea whether people liked it or not. And then it became this thing a few years ago that just kind of took on its a life of its own. And now it's going to be the thing that is on my tombstone, you know? And, and so I'm fine with that. I'm I'm delighted. I like the segment quite a bit. I'm delighted that it, it's taken off in this other form. And um, I never get tired of seeing the way people remix it online. There's so many great ones. That aha one, the hand drawn one that the guy spent a month drawing yeah. is just blows my mind. And the Lego one and, and the uh, green day one. And there's so many. Great ones. Is there any, is there any, uh, Steamed Ham's fan art that you haven't seen that you'd like to see our fans uh, oh. are watching. Uh, any artistic interpretation that you that has ever uh, occurred to you that you'd like to see or, or occurs to you now? Because we can make it happen in under five minutes. Yeah, we should explain. This extends to you as well, Heather. Anytime any guest of ours has requested a piece of fan art, it is delivered 
in five minutes. Our audience works very fast and at a very high quality. Uh, you know, honestly, the thing I most want is the neon sign that somebody has made and posted on Instagram that says Steam Tam. So it's the Burger King logo. And it's like, it's hundreds of dollars. I don't know if any of your fans can make a neon sign in five minutes, but I if mean, so, I'll take, I'll take it. Let's see. We're looking more like still image or perhaps <laughs> limited animation. If there is a, a style, in this style okay. of, okay. you would like to see. I would like to see one of those things. I've seen, um, a fake Steam Tam's movie poster with um ed harris playing superintendent chalmers mm -hmm. and uh nicholas Ch nicholas cage playing skinner i'd like to see some reinterpretations of that or you know some <laughs> some uh yeah. different version of that type of thing that always i think that's a, a very good casting for that for those that's roles. Great. uh now heather i think one of the one of the reasons why uh i think i think writing for a show like rick and morty i think I think is maybe one of the best uh, uh, pedigrees that you could get for qualifying yourself for writing an, a surprising Star Wars film. Because you have to be able, to, because that's a show that keeps having to be smart and surprising. Like, it, it, is, it, is that a high pressure environment? Um, yeah, I well, I mean, like I'm preoccupied with my own failure at all times. So yeah. like, being on a show that I love and admire uh, with a bunch of writers that I love and admire is a um, crucible of uh, self-hatred right. and uh, anxiety. It's great. Um, I, uh, I, I mean, I, I, my, so the episodes that I'm working on, they're not gonna come out until like 2022, 2023, like right. wherever that, like so far away. And all I can think is that I I just hope I hope that they're not the like right. most hated episodes of the show. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's it. Like if even if in somebody's ranking they're like second or third to last, that's fine. Right. But like I just don't want it to be like if if you knew yeah. if you knew that an episode you were writing would be in your view the greatest episode of television ever made, but also the most hated by those who disliked it. Would you accept that as a trade-off? Wait, you so knew, you're saying- You knew in your heart, and perhaps among those that you respect the most, they would acknowledge that you have written the greatest episode of Rick and Morty. But know that among a percentage of fans, because I think this is actually a, not that unreasonable a, a proposition, uh, that the greatest episode is is in some cases the most loathed by those who, you know, in the same way that you ranked The Last Jedi pretty high. Yeah. And there's a certain kind of person that you'll never convince uh, that that's a, a, a well-made film. Right. Yeah. Would, you, would you take the trade-off of writing The Last Jedi, where like if, a percentage of people agree it's the best and a percentage of people think that you should be murdered in this case? <laughs> 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 well, I think, yeah, I would, if, if it was Last Jedi caliber, then you could argue objective points about its quality. Right. Which might might be different from the the way that like a taste based uh, interpretation of the film. Like you can hate what happened to the characters, but you can't really argue that given the setup of the Force Awakens, that what happened to the characters and that like there's objective points you can make. Right. So if that was the case, yes. But there but, are some, there are some boys out there who give it a good old college try. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, arguing, you know. Yeah. Some big dumb dumb doo doo heads who don't like objective points. <laughs> but like imagine you write an episode and it comes out a couple of years from now because Rick and Morty was renewed for 500 more episodes. I don't yeah. know how many. It was a thousand it was, years. It was, it was a, a bigger number than I thought it was possible. Like Rick and Morty was basically renewed for a full run of The Simpsons. They were basically <laughs> just like whatever The Simpsons, <laughs> we'll just give you that renewal. Um, yeah. How would you feel if you if I could show you a glimpse of in 2023? A Rick and Morty fan jumping up onto the counter of a McDonald's, screaming about how he didn't want Szechuan sauce because he was so outraged about your episode. Would that hurt? No, no, that wouldn't. From no, that, that person, would, no, that would be yes, okay. The same guy, wherever he is. I don't know what happened to him. I assume he's still with us, but it's been a hell of a year. Maybe not. That yeah, would, no. I mean, that would be a case of you really taking the hit for the good of society. You could get that guy <laughs> off the McDonald's counter. You'd be doing us all a favor. 
<laughs> like he shows up and cleans it off and he's like, yeah, yeah. I have reinterpreted. Yeah. Uh, he, ad yeah he admits yeah. he is not Pickle Rick. Right. <laughs> they would have to give you an honorary <laughs> Emmy for that one. Yeah. Mm. Um, no, I mean, they're saying, I'm sorry, just quickly. People are saying, speaking of nuggets, Watto, they're criticizing Watto because they think he stopped eating the nuggets. I finished the nuggets, motherfucker. That's why I couldn't speak. I ate them all in a minute. Sorry. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, let's see how quick you can eat that pizza, Watto. Now, Heather, do you have any requests? For, do you have any requests for fan art? Uh, for anything, honestly, it could be anything related to anything you've worked on or something that you would like to work on. I mean, uh, I think it, if if I was, I don't need any fan art for myself. Right. But if I was to request fan art, I would give it to somebody else, and I right. would love a picture of Rick and Dan Harmon drinking together. I think that would be a great piece of fan art. Uh, let's and, do it. Um, and listen, since we're here on this show, let's put them in the cantina. Right. And let's give them yeah. Nico whiskey from the barrel. Mm. <laughs> it's such an excellent whiskey. It's a real good choice, Watto. It's really good. Well, no. Hey, props to Bill. Great choice, Bill. Uh, thank you. All I did was rank it number one. I I, uh, <laughs> I didn't select it, but it is. It's certainly the best whiskey I've ever had. Right. So it's now. Really now good. It took it took almost no time at all for that that upcoming that pending fan art to become branded content, which I think is yeah. just uh, <laughs> kind of where we where we are in the industry right now. Um, Bill, are there any stories for shows that you worked on that don't exist anymore that you're sad never got made, or shows, I, I want, or shows that still exist that you don't work on anymore? I'm sorry, I have to show my fandom here and and focus in on this question. Mission Hill is one of my favorite short-lived TV shows of all time. I have watched the entire Thank run you. of the show several times over the course of my life. It is one of the first shows I went to as a comfort watch when the lockdown started. I, you can answer in other shows, but I have to demand you at least tell us one storyline you wanted to do in the original Bash Mission. Oh, my God. I, this, I don't want to monopolize the conversation, but, yeah, that's six, Mission Hill is my Think this Josh and I, people who don't know, Josh, my partner Josh Weinstein and I, after we left The Simpsons, created the show called Mission Hill. And the whole Bill Oakley, I, Josh I, Weinstein is, production. Yes, that's the <laughs> <see>, that <laughs> that was the closing of it. Um, and uh it was had a it was a calamitous failure. Um, you can see right actually right there behind me, that's a cell for Mission Hill with the characters. That's when it was called the Downtowners. That was the original name of the show. Yeah. Uh, it's got the roommates and me and Josh, the drawings of me and Josh that appear as characters in the show. Anyway, so yeah, we that show had, uh, it, it was the funnest work experience of all time for us. Uh, it had a catastrophic uh, appearance on the WB network back when that was still a thing. Then it ran on Adult Swim for oh. like seven, seven straight years over and over and over and over the same episodes. So yes, there's lots of stuff. There were a number of things that were not completed for that show, including five episodes that were written and partially animated. And, and I should say now, the thing is, actually, Josh and I are working on a sequel to the show, sequel spinoff of the show uh, that we are going to be pitching in a month or two. Um, it's basically the same show, but it has more Gus and Wally, and the name is Gus. And, the name of the show is Gus and Wally. So that's Whoa. like, and, and we're going to use a lot of leftover material from the original series. That's exciting. This is my question for you, and if you cannot answer yet, that is fine. I understand this is proprietary information. I love the reboot being framed around Gus and Wally, they were one of the best aspects of the show. I think that final Gus and Wally episode is your finest moment in the series. Thank you. But, but, does that mean the original characters will still be part of the regular cast? And if so, one of the things I like so much about Mission Hill is it's so set in the specific ages of those characters. And I know you had said the show continued, you would have had them age up as uh, in opposition to what the Simpsons did. Can we expect that they are going to be frozen in around the same time and age period as yeah. the last time we saw it? Yes, it, the show, the series, the spinoff starts about six months after the original series ends. So it's a period piece now. It wasn't a period piece back then. Now it's a period piece it takes place in 1999, 2000. And then uh, we're going to see the same uh, characters hanging yep, around. All, all the same. Same exact stuff, but just a slightly more Gus and Wally, and some flat more flashbacks about Gus and Wally and their life in Mission Hill from the 1950s to the 2000s as right. well. Little the, uh, little prequel scenes, little prequel scenes. Mm -hmm. um, I, love I love it. 
Heather, did you did you have any SNL sketches that you really wanted to get on that never got on? Yeah. Uh, I don't, like, I'm a little worried that if I start talking about this, that like a sniper dot. <laughs> <in my> <laughs> um, I, I wrote uh, a sketch with Simon Rich, uh, which was about, um, a guy interviewing for a job at Google and, uh, they they just pull up his entire search history <laughs> and like and that's like that like that before he and then he's please like please please i don't i don't want the job and then the, the rest of it is just uh, uh ed helms i think was the guest just like slowly grinding sandberg into dust like just like what do you what is this 2 15 a.m <laughs> uh, search for shy girl butt. <laughs> like it's just like that for like, and uh, I we it it went to dress, um, but you never know why anything happens yeah, at right. that job. Yeah, and right. uh, so I do I do wish that one had gone to air. I, I was really it was a real pleasure to to write that one with Simon and. Oh well, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you feel yeah. by by saying it, have you burned your chances of it showing up on late night with Seth Meyers? Because <laughs> they, they do occasionally stage sketches. Yeah. Not, I some from the Sandberg era. Second I, chance I, theater. Second chance theater. It's a recurring segment. I I feel like I would have to get on Seth Meyers first. Mm -hmm. So like all right. Well I every, don't, you know every every journey begins with a, a single step. Well, the George Lucas talk show. That's the step. Yeah. Have you have you guys been on set? No. Uh, uh, this is a sore subject. Heather, <laughs> you don't even know what you're getting into here. George can't even find his thing. Uh, you need we to can, understand. We yeah. did this show for about five years on stage at the various UCB theaters. And George would go out of his way to, as often as possible, book a writer from the Seth Meyer show. For one specific reason, because at the very beginning of this run, when George retired from filmmaking and decided to self-finance his own talk show, yeah. he Where stole Hello from the South by Southwest Lounge sponsored <laughs> by Late Night with Seth Meyers. And every time he would book a writer on, he would go, I want you to understand, I'm a fan of your work. I book <laughs> on your own merits, but also I'm asking you to be a messenger. Seth at Seth by Southwest. Seth X S W. We have this pillow. It was not a giveaway. I stole it. If Seth wants it back, he has to come on this show. We have been challenging Seth Myers to come on this show since before the Force Awakens. Yeah. <laughs> this is our maybe our least successful uh, aspirational mm -hmm. recurring segment. Have you guys considered instead of challenging that in you might Oh, oh, good grief. Bad. Here we go. <laughs> we also did. We that also is did terrific. <laughs> we did get this too from Bring the Noise, which is. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! Wow. Wow. That is great. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, so, short answer no, we have not been on Seth Myers. Yeah. Well, but we, in, we could get you. Let's try and get you on first. That feels like that's more doable. Yeah. And then you have to tell him to come on this show. That's the deal. <laughs> yeah. I, I do feel like if you if you weren't – like, have you considered inviting him? Because if you're challenging him to be on the show, I, I mean, like – I don't want to look desperate, down. Heather. Yeah. We don't want to look thirsty. <laughs> you know, it's very funny. I don't think we've ever officially asked him. No, absolutely <laughs> that's not. That's your job. Are you kidding me? I don't think we've asked him. We got we, burn we the had, ask, Matt Patrick. Yeah. Burn the ask. Yeah, yeah. I can't we believe you haven't asked him. Um, we had Whoopi Goldberg on the show two weeks ago, but we're waiting for Seth Meyers to reach out to us. Yeah, we want him to come here. <laughs> um, Heather, I'm re-looking over the season of SNL that you were at, and there's so many good people on that season. Uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, that was like the Amy Poehler, Jane Lynch, John Hamm, Scarlett, De Niro, Rudd. Like, there's so many. People, who was the person that you were the most uh, either excited for or intimidated by, intimidated by? Well, I I was a, uh, when I was young, I was a fan of Jim Carrey. And yeah. so that was the most, I mean, that was the first time he'd come back uh, to host mm -hmm. after his one hosting in like the 90s. 
Yeah. Um, and so that was really intimidating uh, for me, was writing for Jim Carrey. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. That, that's yeah. the answer. That's but a great answer. The most intimidating human who came <laughs> to uh, to SNL that year was uh, was uh, Marshall Mathers, was Eminem, oh, who wow. was fucking terrifying. Like, <laughs> just like the like I've never seen a human look so intense. Yeah. Like he walked down a hallway and like people would just step aside and be absolutely silent because he was it. It, 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 I, I, yeah. you know, like in an anime when like somebody's like, oh, he has like a murderous aura and nobody can move. <laughs> like that was like the experience of Eminem, like walking past you was just like, oh my God, like ice cold. And that feels like a wild week because on one end of the spectrum, you have Eminem and Lil Wayne. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have Jeff Bridges and Cooking Monster on that show. <laughs> <laughs> so it's truly like you have the scariest and the cuddliest people uh, together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, now, Bill, uh, you had uh, made a comment on Twitter about how you were uh, a big fan of American Graffiti, that it's one of your favorite movies. Oh, my God. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's, I've seen it. I've, I got to have seen it 15 or 20 times at least. Uh, oh. It is one of my favorite movies. And then we know had I'm sure we had several ref, we had large references to it on The Simpsons during those mm -hmm. years as well. Yeah. Most specifically the liquor store scene, mm -hmm. um, which we parodied uh, pretty closely. Yeah, you saw um, it pretty good <laughs> but yeah no i love american i love it love it love it and i love also love days and confused which is pretty much a, a beat for beat copy of american graffiti in a lot of ways but i love them both yeah okay. uh, george will accept your compliments on days and confused as well <laughs> uh yeah i think you know people talk you know it's always star wars star wars star wars and you know i suppose that i i you know share some of the blame for that but people don't realize how much american graffiti changed movies mm-hmm uh, also, it's staggering that American Graffiti only came out like uh, ten years after the time that it was yeah. that it was depicting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I constantly think about that. It's like imagine if we had American Graffiti for uh, two thousand ten. It was just like it. The the the, the yeah. gap between the time that you're nostal you're nostalgizing and the right. time. It would, yeah, uh, I'm making a movie crazy. now about that's set in like the Tea Party, uh, like <laughs> the mid the Tea Party midterms. Yeah, that would be yeah. that would be the era that people would be like nostalgic for now. I, it, yeah, no, I was gonna say I watched both of them uh, this weekend: American Graffiti and more American Graffiti. I had seen the first one; I had not seen the second one, and I thought American Graffiti took place so much earlier than it did because I had that same thought where I was like, that wasn't that much longer later than that. Well, but it, I, I assumed it was the fifties. But it's like 1962 or 63. Yeah. Or the, the song must have confused. Where were you in 63? They say yeah. one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock rock. So you thought that took place in like one, two, three. I yeah. But most of it took place in the early evening. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. A lot of you know. uh, also, I mean, it is. Yeah. That, well, that those songs are from the 50s. That song is from yeah. 1955. Yeah. So it, it's easy to understand why people would think the movie took place in the 50s. Also, because Happy Days. Which yeah. everybody conflates with it, which is an absolute ripoff from hey. Stem's turn of American Graffiti, <laughs> yeah. is is what well, did take place in the fifties. Yeah, for, you know. Yeah. Have you seen more American Graffiti, Bill? Uh, I think I saw it once. I don't. Well, George was not affiliated with that, right? No, I were. I shot. I shot second unit on that. Of course, I was affiliated. I, I use the. I let him use the. We use the Star Wars font at the end of the movie. That's true. I only haven't seen it in years. I have to give it another look. It's on HBO Max. Uh, you know, it, it was a huge bomb. Uh, it, it, made, it made like 10 cents at the box office, but it's an ambitious film. It, it might not, uh, you know, it might, it's in, it, it's easily in the top three American graffiti films, uh, mm -hmm. by any estimation. It's, it's, uh, and, and it's, you know, we had, to, we, we were, we boxed ourselves in because we wrote those little title cards at the end of American graffiti. Uh, saying right. what happened to all the characters, and then immediately made a sequel in which we had to uh, follow those uh, outcomes. We had to, we had to, we painted ourselves into a corner, you know. And then I made, and then I made a prequel to American Graffiti, uh, Radio Land Murders, uh, because the the parents, uh, Brian Ben Ben uh, and Mary Stuart Masterson, play uh, Richard Dreyfuss's parents uh, from American Graffiti. I never knew that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, now you got to, you got some great. You'll have to rent this. It's not streaming anywhere, but you you got a great afternoon's entertainment ahead of you. You can watch American Graffiti for the twenty first time, and then you can watch more American Graffiti. For, have you seen Radio Land Murders? No, I have not. Heather, have you seen Radio Land Murders? No, I have not. You guys work in comedy. You haven't seen Radio Land Murders. This is I a thought comedy. you guys like comedy. You guys were comedy fans. I guess is it because you work on so much comedy, you're just like, I don't want to see another comedy? Uh, you know, Radio Land Murders just has a low profile. It's hard to it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's hard to find it, as you said, online. Yeah. It hasn't gotten a lot of attention yeah. since it came out. So it's kind of it just with the torrent of media yeah. coming out day after day, Radio Land Murders is kind of it gets lost in the shuffle. It's, it's funny you should say torrent because at one point, uh, I don't know if this is still true, but it was the only movie that I've ever searched for on BitTorrent that had not been, it had not been <laughs> torrented. No, no one who had bought a DVD or a Blu-ray. This is true at least a five year, a few years ago. That it, it was the piracy proof. It was like, if Hollywood <laughs> wants to look at how to defeat piracy, Radioland Murders holds the key because no one bothered to rip it from a disc and, and share it with anyone. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Heather, I want to talk to you about the Twilight Zone a little bit. Um, okay. You, you worked on Jordan Peele's uh, uh, new iteration of the Twilight Zone. Uh, yes. Are you good at twists? Do you like writing a twist? I, I mean, like, yeah, I love, I love writing a twist. It's fun, uh, right? Little secret. You put a little secret in, and then you twist twists it. Twists are fun, right? It's it's fun, a, yeah. A twist is just a serious joke. Like it's a joke that's Ooh. not funny. Yeah. Like, uh, and I feel yeah. like the same concepts for sketch comedy apply Radio, to Radio on the Murders. Thing. Radio on the Murders is full of twists. Then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Oh, look at this. Watto doing a little steam dance. <clears throat> that is lovely. I would like to know, Heather, what is there a crossover in writing between Twilight Zone and Rick and Morty? Like, mm -hmm. do you have ideas that you could that, that could go on both? Do you do you open your Rick and Morty file at the Twilight Zone and vice versa? Um, well, not really. The uh, I'm what what's interesting is that two like Alex Rubens and I both went from Twilight Zone to Rick and Morty. He returned to it. He was at Rick and Morty before Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a point where we had broken an episode of Twilight Zone, and then realized that it was essentially an episode of Rick and Morty and had mm. to can it. Um, but at Rick and Morty, it's more based on like following a funny premise to its mm -hmm. insane conclusions than mm. it is about coming in and being like, oh, I want to do something about like AI. Uh, mm. Whereas Twilight Zone was more like, here's a premise, here's the ways it can develop, here's the twist. Um, like it's very, it was like, presenting a structural form as opposed to like, oh man, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be funny if like a rabbit got big? Like, uh, which is like the way that a Rick and Morty episode will sort of spin out. Funny. Is that gonna, yeah. that's really funny. No, yeah, that's, it's not, that's not done. It's not a spoiler. It's a spoiler. <laughs> you have to issue a warning. <laughs> what? I mean, For but season. think about it. Because the For carrots season. don't get big. The carrots don't get big. Yeah. So you have to have more carrots, but the carrots <laughs> are tiny it. to that big rabbit. <laughs> So suddenly it's just like this rabbit is having to get like thousands yeah. of carrots. Very <laughs> old. Rab big. Rab big could be the creature. Oh. I mean, that's a spoiler for like season 37 that she's working yeah. on right oh, now. Yeah. 2020, 2024 can't come soon enough. I can't wait to see that big rabbit. I, now, now I have to go in and pitch a, a, a something about a big rabbit, so that yeah. But you also say rabbit, like there's like, already a lot of buzz about this idea. I, I people yeah. found out about it, and they're buzzing about that big rabbit. <laughs> you're, gonna have, you... you're gonna have you're gonna have annoying dudes all over the world <laughs> jumping up on the McDonald's counter saying, "I'm a big rabbit." <laughs> <laughs> Heather, if you pitch that idea, will you at least attempt to get? George Lucas, a story by credit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like you could do that on that show. Yeah, I feel like yeah. you could do that with any episode, just like a whole season where George yeah. Lucas got story by credit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. George, uh, George, how long? How long do you realistically think it would be before you, George Lucas, would notice George? I don't know. I I'd see it on some state, some printout. I'd be like, "Wait, what's this?" <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be a while. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, Heather, Bill, have, you ever, have you ever done things like that where you, I, I love this idea of getting an idea on one show and then it not going and then being like, I'll take it over here. Have you ever done that? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had an idea from one show that didn't work out and you just thought, you know what? I'm going to make, I'm going to make it happen on this other thing. I, yeah. I have constantly. Yeah. We both. I, uh, yeah. I didn't know who yeah. that was directed to, but yes. Both of you. Both oh. of you. <laughs> Everybody. Yes. I'll answer for Bill. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I, think, I would imagine that every writer does that. I've got tons. I got files of stuff that never made it or for some reason was not right for whatever show I was on at the time that later turns out to be great or turns out to be the genesis of something else like a pilot or, you know, or just a joke that I taught. Like on The Simpsons, there is Internet uh, Municipal House of Pancakes. I had that had that joke for, in my head for like 10 years before I, I it, it appeared on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How often do you how often do you revisit old Simpsons stuff, Bill? I don't really. I mean, I once in a while I watch the old episodes um, on FXX when they're on yeah. there. But like, mm -hmm. I don't like. I sort of have them all memorized, and so right. I, I mean, sure. I revisit them all day long, every day on Twitter because people are tagging me in their in their <laughs> their things about Daily Simpsons quotes or whatever. But I don't like. Yeah. I don't want, I, I already have them virtually memorized. So I don't, but I do love to watch the ones from before I worked there, right? like season two and three. I don't. And so like the yeah. baseball one, for example, when that's on, I want to see it every time. How often do you re revisit the Tracy Ullman shorts? <laughs> um, once in thir once every 30 or 40 years. Like that's great. It's, that's great. it's good to do it just once every 30 or 40 years, just to yes. check and make sure everything's just, working. Okay. Just binge them every, oh, look at that. Now that's good. <laughs> Uh, and then actually, that, that, that Godfather font. Yeah, I shot some second unit on Godfather. Um, when you, whenever you see in the Godfather, um, like when when Michael uh, sees in the newspaper uh, uh, that his father's been shot. Uh, that was me filming. I shot the uh, the newspaper. I would do a lot of second unit on that. And then I I was supposed to do this. Is my sort of like I'll I'll do my idea somewhere else if I can't do it here. It was. I, Apocalypse Now was supposed to be my film. I was supposed to make that. Hey, look, hey. there it is. There you go. Oh, hey. That looks like it could be in like uh, uh, the New Yorker or something. Little, a little. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. What? Well, what's the caption? Let's give the New Yorker caption for Sarah to add to it. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's great. Well, can I can I say Mission Hill has my favorite joke about captions under New Yorker style cartoons, mm -hmm. which is, "This is so Kafka esque." Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I, yeah. I'll go. I'll, I'm going to go with. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it fits. It can tell that's what Dan's saying, and it, it tracks. Yeah. Most successful joke of all time. Yeah. Yeah. That is. Did you guys know that's the most uh, financially successful uh, joke of all time? No. I, I have Which a bad joke? feeling. About, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> ah, okay. No, I, they, they say it in all the Star Wars movies. So you add up that box office. Uh, they say it in Radio Land Murders. That adds a little bit of money. Not not much. Uh, I, I say it in the. I've got it in all. I just throw it in at every chance I get into every movie that when something bad's about to happen, a character will say, "I have a bad feeling about this," and then the audience will laugh. Now I'm curious because I get a lot of pushback on this, especially from comedy writers, who say that's not a joke. How do you feel? I feel it is a joke. So your intention when, say, Han Solo says that line is the yeah. audience to roar with laughter? I didn't say roar, but laugh enough that it counts like it was a successful joke. They don't sit in stunned silence. They're amused so, by it. They're, so they're heading towards... It's like a James part. Thurber or a Robert Benchley. It's like a, it's, it's humor. Yeah. It's a classic. It, it's an off-the-cuff bit of Oscar Wilde-level yeah. witticism. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's Fran Lebowitz. It's, you know, it, it, it's not, uh, it's not the Zaz brothers, you know, it's not those it, guys. It, it's, it's a razor sharp bar. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's erudite. It's a, it's a little, it's a, a touch of class and it's a joke. Yeah. It's a joke. <laughs> do, Bill, do you agree it's a joke? Heather, do you agree it's a joke or no? You know, and ask me as many questions. I can take. ask if you have any follow-ups about this. No, not roaring. I never expect. I'm sure it's happened. But I don't expect it. If someone roars with laughter, I think, nah, calm down. Let That's them, a little much. George, let them answer, George. <laughs> all right, all right. George is getting defensive already. Roaring with laughter. I would I would love to hear a similar caliber joke from another film. Like if you can cite 
All right. Hey. Uh, okay. How do you how do you feel about Cleveland? That's from Tootsie. <laughs> Right? Nobody roars. <laughs> funny little joke. <laughs> wow. And that movie no. made like 180 domestic. I'm not just, that was a joke. Yeah. Bill, what's the, your You know, I, I, okay. I look, I think it will function as a joke depending on what's going on in the background. A bad thing. Uh, a bad, bad thing. Bad right. Well, bad. how far is that? Because look, the perfect example of a model for this joke is the joke from the naked gun. When Frank Drebin is saying there's nothing to see here and there's fireworks factory exploding behind. Him. Right. That's, okay. Oh, I, that's I, hilarious. I that's, the the line is, oh. that's the Zaz boys. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that joke is hilarious. The line yeah. is not hilarious, but what's going on in yeah. the background and his reaction to it is hilarious. Therefore, if somebody's saying I have a bad feeling about this and there's already a catastrophe in process behind them, I think it works as a joke. Yeah. All right. I mean, th fine. this is the or problem with what you're saying, Bill, though, is yeah. that Zucker Abram Zucker, great joke writers, bad businessmen. They made three naked gun movies. They only did that joke one time. That's not <laughs> how you get the highest person joke in history. You got volume, to do it volume, style. volume. Put it in every movie. It starts to get new kinds of laughs out of familiarity. It becomes a runner. Um you know, uh, there you go. Wow. Look at that joke. Now Sarah, Sarah did her own thing. I was imagining it being in a, in italics in a classy font at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. you know? Sarah did her own thing. <laughs> Imagine now, giving this to yeah. Dan on tomorrow and be like, "Hey, look!" I would, and then telling him how this happened. And he'd be like, "What the fuck is this?" No, Sarah. Uh, here's what like, I want. I want Sarah to also put it in italics at the bottom, like a New Yorker caption. Yeah, yeah. I want you to leave. <laughs> Leave the quote before, but I also want it at the bottom. Do yeah. both and then show that to Harmon tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. Heather, Heather, is that a is that a joke? I mean, like I'm Pickle Rick. That's funny, but that's not. Is that a joke? Mm. <sighs> he is Pickle Rick at that point. I don't he know. Is that I'm, true. <laughs> but I'm Pickle. Like I'm Pickle Rick. Mm. Is funny mm -hmm. because it's he's Pickle Rick. immediately completely <laughs> obvious. Also, I'm not sure that it's a joke, even oh, though it's okay. funny. I'll tell. You, I have a I have a young man on the on the counter of a McDonald's who would disagree with you. <laughs> I bet you. I bet you. He thinks it is a joke. No. <laughs> Look, I think if if Han Solo had said I have a bad feeling about this, and and then called it back like right before the awards ceremony, like he leaned over to Luke right before they get their medals and like I got a bad feeling about this, then like maybe. You'd be like, oh, oh here, you've got context. Yeah. I don't know, Heather, Heather, this is actually why, bad. I, um, I, I've never, right now, I agree with you. That would be good. And I I would love to, if I still had my mitts on those films, that would be up by morning. I would have, that's yeah. a great place to put the joke in. Yeah. I want to make it clear, too. We're not trying to be antagonistic. This is why we booked the two of you Probably. on the yeah. show. We were what? open to punch up. You know, but yeah. what is happening? But but is it is hat? The, that yes, is hat? For, okay. for, for yes, the back of the clones. Yes. Okay. Great. This, okay. This is my question because I'm trying to parse what you're saying here. Genuinely, you're the two of you masters of comedy writing. We're here to learn. Heather, are you saying that Han Solo saying I have a bad feeling about this would be funnier? If he were a pickle at the time, I'm, I'm just confused <laughs> on the fine points of your suggestion. If he was a pickle then, and he's obviously a pickle. I get that. He has to be visibly a pickle. That's the joke. <laughs> then he can say, I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, if, I'll, I'll, yeah, I mean, if I can suggest for a second special edition from the retired filmmaker to come out of retirement, I would I may, want Han Solo to be a pickle. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I may have to do a heist to, to I, get into the, the Disney Plus servers and upload a special edition. Keep refreshing, yeah. keep refreshing those movies on Disney Plus because one of these days I'm going to get. I do work on. I do work on those movies from time to time, and I'm trying to find a backdoor into Disney Plus to just upload uh my versions what do we got here oh look at that hey. oh that's good oh. A little roger rabbit that's got a little yeah. roger rabbit vibe there you know I, like yeah. seamlessly I, 
I mean, and uh, George, if following your formula of any good joke should be told every single time, yeah. I have a big <laughs> idea in terms of merchandising opportunity. Mm-hmm. Pickle Frick. Oh. oh, there you go. That's great. He's already about the size of a pickle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's great. Bill, now, what uh, is it? Yeah. Go ahead, George. Go ahead, George. Well, no, I'll finish, just to tie off the thought I was saying before, we got distracted with some fan art. Uh, I was supposed to do Apocalypse Now. That was my project, mm-hmm. and my. But then I was busy working on Star Wars uh, Four. I was working on Episode uh, A New Hope, and uh, my mentor Francis, yeah, he kind of took it from me, he stole it from me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, you know, and he paid a price. If you watch Hearts of Darkness, it was not easy to make that film. And so I thought, what am I going to do? I got to make, I got this itch to make this Vietnam movie. Um, I want to make a movie about the war. So I just threw it into more American graffiti. And that's where I did a lot of the second unit stuff in that. That was, if you watch more American graffiti, that's my apocalypse now. That's my little mini. It's like a quarter of that film. And if you want to see what my apocalypse now would have been like, it's right there in the movie. And it's basically like what happens. It, it, it's it's got a great cast. It's got all these great Delroy, a young Delroy Lindo is in it. Uh, it's got details uh, about what it's like if a nerd goes to Vietnam and they make him, uh, they put him on latrine duty, and he's trying to he's 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 trying to get hurt so he can get sent home from Vietnam. So it's kind of like a Revenge of the Nerd style Vietnam movie. Mm-hmm. That was mine. That, that was mine movie, bitter. yeah. That movie has a terrific soundtrack too. I actually owned it on an LP back when people still had LPs. It had two. Mm-hmm. It was a two record set, just like the original American Graffiti. Yeah. Wall to wall hits. Yeah. Great oh. 60 stuff. Amazing. That is my that is my fondest memory of American Graffiti. It's a soundtrack. Great, great track. That was when it was a little cheaper to put together a soundtrack like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's hard to do. Uh, Bill, where? Where do you think the characters from the new Partridge family are in 2021? Oh my God. Are you, I can't believe you dredged that up out of the, out of the graveyard. (laughs) This is his game. Yeah. You're talking about catastrophes that you wanted to know about things that, yeah, that was one. That was the thing that Josh and I worked on. It had such a, there's a lot of parts I can't tell in a public forum about why that thing went so South, but it did. It was, it did, it did get Emily stone, Emma stone out into the world. Yeah, no, that was Emily, we, yes, she's credited as Emily Stone in it. She was Emma, Josh actually to really take a lot of credit for her. Josh picked her out of a giant casting call in L.A. and that was her first thing ever. Um, oh, wow. And then, yeah, and and she was amazing. And so we kept rewriting the script to give Laurie Parker more lines. And then um, that thing didn't get picked up. And then we put her on another thing like we cast her in like her first three roles. Um, and so like. That's that's a t- our tiny connection to her, <laughs> her massive success. But yes, yeah. I don't know. I have no interest in that thing. It was such a, a calamity. I'll tell people in private, but not in public, why it turned out the way it did. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's good to know. Was it was it a continuation from the original show? No, it was a reboot, and it basically was like the off. It was a it was a, it was a new family, and we had filmed it like this is before the American Office. We were like, we wanted it to be like the British office. So we filmed the thing kind of like with interviews and stuff like that. And it was, I just think we didn't like, here's the thing, casting a a TV show, casting, finding the cast of a TV show through a reality show, there's a reason why that hasn't been done again Mm. since that. Like it just, it's not a way to, it's not an efficient way to cast great actors or singers or whatever, you know? And so like it's, that's the short version of the story. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Heather, hey, Heather, Heather, a, a similar, a similar kind of question for you, Heather. Um, mm-hmm. In the year 2021, where do you think that the newscaster from Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo is? Great question. <laughs> she, she didn't even make it into the cut of the film. She's credited, but she was cut out wow. of the movie. Where do you think she is though? Um, Can you tell her story now? since she didn't make it into the movie. <laughs> can, can I tell, I mean, okay. It was my first acting gig. Right. Uh, uh, R- Schneider <laughs> came to see a comedy show that I was doing in Amsterdam called Boom Chicago. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, was like, hey, we're shooting the sequel to 
Deuce Bigelow, would you like to come be a part? And I was like, yeah. Uh, and he's like, we're shooting it all over Europe, so we'll, we'll find something for you. And then they flew me to Spain uh, and put me up for a week for a single line uh, that I said on the beach, which was, <laughs> I think, uh, I was a newscaster, and I was like, I believe that man is fucking a porpoise or something like that. Uh, <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> but, but the the um, place they put me up in Spain was also like a clothes optional old person's resort. Wonderful. So there was a part of me that thought that I was being pranked, on, like <laughs> that something. <laughs> right. um, so uh, it was it was a strange time, and then also the line was cut from the movie. Sure. Uh, yeah. So is it possible you were being pranked? <laughs> I'm in the credits though, which is yeah, also but, weird because you don't credit somebody who doesn't appear. You do if in it's your film. Of, like, you do if it's part of the prank. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it seems to me like putting you in the credits is like the cherry on top, which is like, yeah, no. What should she say? Oh, I believe that man is fucking a porpoise. Was there a man fucking a porpoise? I think so. I think in the scene, Bigelow is pulling a porpoise out of the ocean to save mm -hmm. it from right. something. Right. Yeah. right. But, it, but it, looks, looks, it looks inappropriate. Right. It looks suggestive. Yeah, it, it looked like have, he was fucking. Well, the, I mean, honestly, the I should have turned the camera and said, "I have a bad feeling about this." Yeah, <laughs> it's a great. That's a great alt water. I mean, it, it sounds like if they'd left it in, perhaps we'd be in a different place today because journal. Accurate journalism has never been more important, and that yeah. kind of that mm. kind of uh, on-air speculation, without verifying what's happening, um, has put this country in a very precarious position. George Watto, I hate to interrupt, but we did. We normally tell our guests that you know the industry is not watching this show; they don't care about what's going on. But deadline Safe picked space. deadline picked something up that we were talking about already, which is crazy. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that this got out. I didn't think it would. Wow. That like, carrot yeah. is so small. Also, <laughs> this story was so urgent that Deadline is running it without ads. Yeah, no ads. <laughs> like this is this is like no, no, it's too important. Don't even bother running. Don't even bother running the ads. No time for ads, Doctor Jones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, now it has to happen or or yeah. the show will be it'll be an embarrassment for the show if Big Rabbit yeah. doesn't make an appearance. I mean, look at this. Look at oh this. We're a lot of big, big is wow. this its own is, is this its own show? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, this this is starting this is less and less feeling like a great idea for an episode and more like a backdoor pilot. Yeah, <laughs> that's from Steve Dressler. He's a friend of mine. That's Steve. Good work. Oh yeah, Steve's the yeah. best. Ah. Um, <laughs> and I like that Big Rabbit is is close to the style, but it's not an exact match. It's kind of like when the critic yeah. and the Simpsons, you know, like the two worlds would merge right. and they'd keep right. the house style. Right. Or, <laughs> up on happy days. There you go. This is great. You <laughs> got to you got to show this to Dan. Yeah. Dan's got to see this. Dan's going to love. Going it. To Dan's going to love this. He's going and, to love and, it. And you got to admit the joke works better with repetition yeah. when you see it right. yeah. in two places that's when the yeah. joke really starts to kick in it's sort of like i always thought that the joke was going to be a little bit like it's like the two keys on the submarine if you want to launch the nukes you have to have two different people turn the key at the same time yeah that's what that that's what that looks like to me I right feel like and, and george <laughs> george thinks of i have a bad feeling about this like in yeah. 28 men all having to turn the keys at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how he thinks about comedy. You're saying that <laughs> joke? I'm not saying it's the greatest joke of all time, but no joke has a higher box off. No specific single joke has a higher. I, I defy anyone to find. <laughs> it's I, I, uncontested. It's uncontested because it didn't. Yeah. Like maybe there's a, there's a joke that's, you know, there are certain tropes right. that yeah. you can't credit to anyone, but, uh, but that's my joke. Like that's right. my joke. Maybe. What oh, about oh. I am I'm Iron Man? Great joke. That is great a great joke. joke. He, how how often does he say that though? He says it three. in Iron Man, and he says it yeah. in 
Endgame. Endgame. Or the, I mean, the what is it? It drives it it's 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 giving, us a, yeah. giving us a run for our money. But yeah. first of all, I adjust for inflation. I adjust for <laughs> I adjust for inflation on this. All right. You yeah. know, like if they if any of the jokes from Gone with the Wind had been repeated in more movies, <laughs> then I'd be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd be worried, honestly. If I were you, George, I'd be worried about those fucking minions. Banana oh. is the one that feels like it's closest to giving you a run for the, your yeah. money. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Banana is a very George Lucas joke. And that <laughs> one could almost step back and go, is that technically a joke? Yeah. <laughs> the best jokes are always jokes that the the... <laughs> The more intense, the more more in the thick of it a comedy writer is, the more they're yeah. willing to step back and ask that question. Is this a Take joke? the head. Is Whereas, it? Yeah, is it? But but a normal person, a, a, someone who's not in the business will just roar with laughter, as you said, Heather. Yeah. They'll, they'll roar with laughter. Yes, they roar. A comedy writer will think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the ride home. Heather, if you had to pitch a Star Wars store, uh, I'm gonna we're, we're announcing some new shows. Uh, mm. We because Disney's been announcing so many uh, new Star Wars shows, and they don't mm -hmm. always make the ones that they announce. So we decided we would start announcing them and see if we could get some skin in the game. See if we can get some of them, uh, get some buzz, get some momentum. I'd pose this question to both of you: If there are any, if you could pitch just as a wild pitch, uh, your dream Star Wars show or Bill, I'm going to say it. If you wanted to pitch your dream American graffiti, oh follow, my god! Like, mm -hmm. uh, if, if you if someone could, would give you the keys to the because the the cast member, most of the cast of American Graffiti are still around. Yeah. They're still you could you could make uh, another American Graffiti. You know, get Harrison back in there as Bob Falfa, and you got yourself a <laughs> a real uh, a real exciting uh, possibility. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a time to incredible. pitch those things. So if, if either of you have any ideas for like, Heather, if you could pitch a new Star Wars project, if someone just said, <laughs> you go into Disney and they say, Heather, we want to be, we want to be in the Heather Ann Campbell business and we want right. you part of the Star Wars IP. We want your version of a show. What would that be? So, okay. You can do anything you want, carte blanche. Uh, I think... I think to attack Star Wars itself would be really hard. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you would have, like it's a lot of lore, it's a lot of everything. But the phrase "in a galaxy far, far away" implies that we are in the Star Wars universe. So I would do a modern day coming of age story about a kid who discovers that the Force is real and he has it, like on regular Earth, That's and that the movies are not just movies, but some kind of mythological mm -hmm. like. Artifact. It's true. Um, all the stories are true. All all of it's true. Like mm -hmm. because also there'd be the additional like nerdiness of like trying to convince people that you have the force and mm -hmm. other people being like from the movie and be like, yeah, but not. Right. I mean, like from uh, we all have it apparently. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I guess I, that I would be, it would I be. Could, yeah, I think it would be great. It would also explain why so many people are getting so worked up about it. Yeah. Like. Because some people are like, I don't get it. They're just movies. But if it, if the force is real, it starts to explain, you know, a lot of a lot of this energy that people have around it. You know, Heather, I say this with complete earnestness. I feel like I just heard someone pitch the highest grossing movie of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I I just oh god, I wish I were an executive. I wish I had green light power right now. Just imagining the money. You also, so much of it could be shot so reasonably. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, like you could also just be like, everyone show up in your regular clothes. Yeah. We're making a <laughs> yeah. Star Wars. Like, yeah. Just like show up in wearing some denim, and it's like it's yeah. fine. It takes place now. You could shoot it on. You That's could still shoot it on the uh, the volume that they shoot the Mandalorian, but it's just like a school or like a restaurant. <laughs> it just looks normal. Oh. <laughs> now, Bill, Bill, do you have any? Do you have any yeah, hard I do. I do. I don't know that this is going to float your boat, George, but I have an idea that uses American graffiti as a backdrop for something else. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't, I feel like those characters exist in a certain time and space, and taking them out of the time and space is a risky proposition, especially because they shouldn't age. It's a coming, in, coming of age story. And so yeah. is American graffiti. So is more American graffiti. So my, I would like to be able to use the American graffiti film 
I want to have, I would do a film about that movie came in, came, which came out in August, 1973, being shown in the Nixon White House, the height of Watergate. Okay, <laughs> Nixon is virtually losing his mind. His advisors are being fired and they're like, Mr. President, we have some entertainment for you tonight, latest Hollywood release. We're gonna show in the White House Theater, American Graffiti. Mm -hmm. And how he and the remains of his, of his staff during that time react to American graffiti, both positively and negatively. Right. Um, and also with what's going on in Vietnam at that time. So I think that, I don't think that would be a popular film. It would probably make about 1% of what Heather's film right. would make, but it would be something I would want to see. It also, yeah. at the end of the movie, you can, when you're listing like what happened to all the people, you got great <laughs> stuff. You got great stuff at the end of that. And also you have that Ron Howard would go on to direct Frost Nixon. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. like, a cast member is going to go on to make a Nixon movie. Uh, and Solo. And Solo. He's going to touch both the Nixon and the Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. I also think that that made me think, because I thought you were saying these characters are frozen in time. And I thought, you know, there was a Happy Days animated show in which the Fonzie yes. and the Happy Days gang uh, had access to a time machine. And Fonzie yeah. had a a dog who wore a little leather jacket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, alien girl. Yeah, they help I her fix her time machine, but then they end up that. going. Heather, have you ever seen this show? No. Oh, it's it. It was the Rick and Morty of its day. <laughs> okay. Um, because it's an animated show in which mm -hmm. some fun characters travel around in science fiction time machine. That, mm -hmm. That's Rick and Morty. That's Rick and Morty. Yeah, right? that's yeah, that's Rick and Morty. That's yeah. I, mean, I guarantee you, Harmon's seen it. I guarantee you, Harmon watched the show. <laughs> Probably. I, I bet you a million dollars. I bet yeah. you a million okay. dollars that Harmon's seen that show. <laughs> and uh, that's a good, Heather, you should take that bet. That's a good bet. It's a great bet. Um, well, million, I don't um, understand how I would cash in the bet. Well, the if, like, what if, is if, the you, bet? if you tell Dan, the bet is if Harmon hasn't seen this show, then I pay you a million dollars. <laughs> what? I don't, I mean. And if you, okay. but, but. If he has seen this show, then you owe me a million dollars. Okay. And that's bad. I, I don't that's want that bad. bet. That's bad. I, don't, for I have you. no interest in it's that a, bet. It's okay. a bad bet. It's a bad bet because I guarantee you he's seen it. And yeah. you don't, and, and, and a million dollars is nothing for me, Heather. It's nothing. Yeah. I know. So Heather, you're saying you don't want the bet. I do not want to take that bet. No. So right. it's almost like you have a bad feeling about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty great. funny, right? Pretty funny. I mean, pretty funny. But if you, if you, okay, it mm -hmm. works there because you've said it so many times. Master. But if that was the first time you ever had said it, yeah, mm -hmm. that wouldn't be a joke. Yeah, you but could you never yeah. claim you're the first time. Heather, by your own standard, your least favorite Star Wars movie is the first one. And Heather, I'll also say Wait, this. <laughs> George keeps making prequels, so he is technically, he just keeps setting himself saying it earlier and earlier, even though he's already said it before. Right, so it's, it's never the of, first time from a certain perspective. Yeah. You you it's are a person, your point of view is that the first is the worst. Yes. And you verify that with your analysis of this joke. But yeah, the first time, the first time you tell this joke, you're yeah. going to have to take the hit. People did right. not roar with laughter that first time, but yeah. look, you're laughing now, all because of the <laughs> joke. That's why we make prequels, so that's that things funny. don't have to always shoulder the burden of being the first. Yeah. You can look, keep on dividing the weight. Look right. at how much you're laughing as a direct <laughs> result of this joke that has been so profitable. It, it just, like, the, the laughter keeps accruing the same it's way the true. box office does. Imagine how funny it would be when we make the joke again five minutes from now. <laughs> It'd be so funny. But Bill, I, I do think an animated American graffiti where we where we make it even better than the oh look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the answer, of course, is yes. Oh, it couldn't be more of a joke. I don't know how you'd make it any more of a joke than that. Oh, it's so good. The only issue is it might be too funny. Yeah, I, I do. Pickle Frick. Yeah, this is great. This is great stuff.
<laughs> well, if it wasn't a joke before, it's certainly a joke by now, and then it yeah. counts as a joke for all the times before. <laughs> yeah. Bill, how do you feel about everyone saying that The Simpsons predicted so many things? Is it just, it, was that something you guys were setting out to do, or is it just like we put out so many episodes that it was bound to happen? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. You're, you hit the nail on the head. The, the fact of the matter is that The Simpsons has predicted only one or two things, but some of them were big, like Donald Trump being president. That was right, Dan yeah. Greeny, my friend, who wrote that. That was a joke, and he, as he explained it, it was just a lot that was played as a joke because it was a logical last step before hitting rock bottom, <laughs> right, but it yeah. really happened. And that's yeah. unfortunately the other stuff that's been the, almost everything else that is allegedly a prediction. It's just because history repeats itself. And, and right. these episodes are so old and we yeah. were writing them about stuff that had taken place in the sixties, seventies and eighties, like that, that flu thing. Everybody is like the Simpsons predicted the pandemic, but we were just making fun of the Osaka flu from 1969 when, sure. uh, because that was like, it, it, people knew about that back then. So like these things, it's just history repeating itself and, and people trying to, people having fun with making their own memes like that groundskeeper Willie thing from the um, capital takeover mm -hmm. um, that are almost always forged, but you know, are, they get people talking they're in, mm -hmm. and they're entertaining, yeah. but they're also uh, misleading in that way. Well, it's also once you start looking at The Simpsons as a predictive force, and uh, considering the amount of criticism that something that popular inevitably comes in for, people don't talk about all the things that The Simpsons, if you count them as predictions, most things on The Simpsons have not come true. That's <laughs> very true. You know? There has not been a single McBain movie released in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you start, if you count those few predictions that are accurate, then you have to start counting. It's like, it's like once you start reading the reviews, once you accept the good ones, you have to accept the bad ones too. If yeah. you start watching the Simpsons from the beginning and keeping a tally of which things have and haven't uh, come true, you know, itchy and scratchy land uh, is not something that has come to pass, despite there being, you know, theme parks in operation constantly up until recently all over the world and there is yet to be a Westworld style uh, attack of uh, where a theme park attacks its right. its uh, yeah. its patrons. Uh, well, I mean, who knows? It's possible. But look at this. We made the front page. Wow. Uh, that's <laughs> that's a an accomplishment. And hold on, there, is there an article? Is there an article that accompanies it? Yeah. They are reporting on the cartoon. Oh wow. That's the yeah. that's the comment is just that. That's a very funny comment. Yeah, very funny. Um yeah, and you can tell you can tell that's real because none of the other like on the on on The Simpsons, whenever you show like a a, a movie a theater marquee or a newspaper front page, there's always lots of hidden jokes. There's all yeah. if you freeze frame it, there's so many freeze frame jokes like that. And if you'll notice with that New Yorker all of the other headlines were not funny. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's how you know that it's real because otherwise they would have put in satirical false headlines for jokes for people to pause later. Uh, yeah. Very true. Yeah. I guess I'm convinced. A rave review. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so satisfying. That's so. Uh, how are you guys feeling about the Super Bowl? What's happening? Is it over? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I have know. no idea. I don't know. I who's so. your favorite? Like, who's your favorite <laughs> fictional buccaneer? <laughs> oh my God! No, the uh, uh, Tampa Bay is ahead, thirty-one to nine. Seems like uh -oh. it's over. Uh oh. Wait, 31, 31 to nine. Yes. Mm. That's <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. Hmm. Heather, I have a question, Heather. You've worked with uh, so many amazing improvisers on TV. Okay. But there's one that I feel like stands out above the rest and I want to know what it was like to improvise with this person. What was it like to improvise with Tony Hawk? Um, he's really, really sweet. He seems uh, great. He seems great. He's, he's a really, he was a really sweet guy and he did skateboard tricks. And like, that's a, what else you want from Tony Hawk other than like, yeah that he can carry a scene and he does a skateboard trick in front yeah. of you, then like, you're like, oh shit, that's the entire experience. You're doing the you know? thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he did the thing. He did the uh, thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. he right. was, he was great. He's, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of starstruck by everyone on earth. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so it was. Thank you. Well. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome, Wano. <laughs> um, <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's this just once in a while defamiliarize what's happening just for yeah. for your own pleasure just look at that elephant yeah, 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 yeah. be like okay yeah. well um yeah I mean all of the people that came to whose line also it's such a it's you know it's whose line like who yeah. didn't watch it in like 1999 on well, what comedy is, what is that? What is that like going into a show like that? Because you're saying you get intimidated by a lot of people. Uh, I feel like it's a lot of the same people are still doing Who's Line. Is that scary? Uh, is that cool? So, so the fr I watched myself on it, and it felt like I had been forced gumped into an episode. Like it didn't make yeah. any fun. It didn't. I have very little memory of the experiences of recording mm -hmm. those episodes, other than being very cold and very hungry, mm -hmm. and. Uh, like I, I was starstruck by the backdrop, which was mm -hmm. the same backdrop that they used in the old ones. And I was like, yeah. you guys kept the, like the sponge painting thing yeah. like that, you know? Um, I don't know, it's it, like, it's great. It's great, it's such a positive yeah. experience. It's a really, really Ted Lasso style, like, oh, it's whose line is it anyway? Look, they're right. gonna do the thing with the arms. Right. Yeah. You can get yeah. mad at that. <laughs> now, Heather, not to, not to, I don't, I, I love what you're saying, but when you say you felt like you were Forrest Gumped into <laughs> whose line is it anyway? That Industrial Light and Magic uh, did the effects for Forrest Gump. Please, in the future, rather than because that's one of those things where you just say you were Industrial Light and Magic into it. Yeah. You could say I alamed for sure. I alamed if, if it's the if, proper if, verb. Because yeah. if you say we're gumped, it starts to feel as though like that movie like did its own thing, whereas it was really right. Ireland making that yeah. magic happen. Okay. And In the future, I will when I tell like saying, that story again. Like, yeah, it's just it's like saying Kleenex when you mean tissue. It's sort of mm -hmm. one of those things where it starts to become a thing where and then all tissues are Kleenexes. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make this tense. No, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I no, was, no, no, I, uh, I don't know. That's not why I said. Heather, please, that's not why I said. It. I just wanted. To, I just want. I just want to make sure. You know, it's a big part of my legacy. <laughs> was Watto ILM'd into the Phantom Menace? Oh yeah, yeah, baby. yeah. Are you oh, kidding yeah. me? Yeah, totally. Yeah, he was totally ILM'd into yeah. it. Like he was ILM'd into reality. You know, like I'm, I'm like, nothing but ILM. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's yeah. just billions of ones and zeros. Just yeah, baby. Right back here. Yeah. 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 Nobody can count how high Watto's number is, you know, in terms of ones and zeros. He's all digital. Bill, <laughs> Bill do you enjoy writing for live action or animation more? Uh, I, animation more because you can control every little thing that happens in every, every tiny little bit of it. You know, like the actors bring a lot to the party of obviously they're critically important, but yeah. they, but then you get to control every other little aspect of it. And I'm a kind of a control freak. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, sure George why, knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, because the actors, the actors bring a lot to the party, but you don't want to have to. Sometimes, if you had people come to a party and they bring stuff you don't want, you want to mm. be able to throw that stuff out and just like have what you want at the party. You and, know, and, and, right? And I'm, you're also not limited by reality by the number. I'm yeah. sure Heather realizes at Rick and Morty, there's the, the infinite amount of stuff. You, it's actually intimidating to write a mm -hmm. show like that because you can go anywhere or do anything in every scene. You're not limited by the cost of the sets or the physics of the actors, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 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 You mean like that? You mean like this? You can That's do great. this very easily. That's great. Yeah. I mean, that looks like a good episode, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it, That's it. That, you realize at the end of the episode, the twist is that the rabbit's really big. Uh. Yeah. You think everything <laughs> else, you think everything else is really small. Yeah. Right. You yeah. think you're watching the episode about the, the, the carrots that shrunk. Right, it's the invaders. Classic these toy carrots like really shrunk. These carrots yeah. are so small. No, no, no. Yeah. There's a twist. How often, how often on something like either Twilight Zone or Simpsons, I guess, do you get into breaking a story and you're like, oh, they already did this. This has already been done. Does that happen? Or I guess even on like Futurama, like Futurama went on so long, Portlandia went on a long, like a lot of these shows have gone on so long. Has that happened? Well, SNL, like, SNL's been on a long time. Yeah, I, yeah I've heard. And that's what happened when they ordered all those episodes of Rick and Morty. I was like, how the hell are they going to come up 
with that many episodes that are not like the other ones they've already done. Like it's such a, yeah. they're so distinctive. Even when there's a new season, I'm like, I can't believe they were able to find that many new stories. But then when they ordered whatever it was, 150 new episodes, whatever <laughs> you were talking about mm -hmm. earlier, it just sounds like the most intimate. Exactly. Uh, even if somebody asked me to come up with one, Rick and Morty, I would be extremely intimidated because I couldn't believe anything they hadn't already done. Right. Yeah. Because, well, because Futurama goes through so many different sort of high concept, big sci-fi tropes and ideas. And. But Rick and Morty burns through them at like three times the pace as Futurama. <laughs> Futurama. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. It's so but, terrifying. It would make a good Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to write Rick and Morty. You should do that. Heather, you should write the Twilight Zone about trying to write the Rick and Morty. Yeah. Okay. Thank Watto's you. Watto's been actively trying to get into the room at this point. This is all Watto's. <laughs> yeah, trying to get staff this season. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a bold, like it's a bold endeavor. You have to be bold. You know, I didn't know everything that was going to happen in all the Star Wars movies when I said there were going to be nine of them. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Is that true? Yeah. You didn't it's know? It's a bluff. It was a bluff. Yeah. I mean, I, why don't I, uh, we took uh, 101 and 201 at UCB. We took 101 yeah. with, uh, I, I had Will Hines for 101 and Kevin Hines for 201. And I had the opposite. Kevin for one, Will for two. But truly, mm -hmm. the yeah, the real improv in my life was uh, calling the shot of saying, this is a nine episode saga when I really didn't, know all the details of it and i had to then i had to figure it out as i was going along you know i didn't know that initially i didn't know that darth vader was going to be luke's dad and then i was like he's his dad and then mm -hmm. you just have to and i'm like you know i knew that I, the one thing i knew was that they would have a volcano fight like i knew that at the beginning I, I knew i had that in my back pocket like these guys are friends they will eventually get into a big volcano fight but everything else was just sort of figuring it all out, out along the way, you know, and it might as well have been, you know, 200 episodes of Rick and Morty as far as like the amount of story I was going to have to break because there's <laughs> so much going on in each Star Wars movie. Like you just watch Attack of the Clones and it's like there's like five different movies going on in that in that movie. Yeah. yeah. There's so one much of them is about Watto. One of them is about new hat. Watto has a new hat and he meets the boy that he used to own. And that yeah. boy's mad at him now, and he's yeah. a little scared. Then and another... Watto is mad at the boy because the boy doesn't say anything about the hat. Yeah, <laughs> the boy intentionally, and the boy's thinking about it. He's thinking that Anakin is thinking Watto got a yeah. new hat. But he right. thought, I'm but not going like, uh, to where... give him the satisfaction. I'm not going to even right. comment on it. I'm not going to say nice hat. I'm not gonna. Where's my mom? Gonna, Where's my mom? I'm Where's my mom? mom? Where's my mom? The whole time he's thinking, yeah. "Don't mention the hat. Don't give him the pleasure of acknowledging that new hat." Ugh. and it's such a stylish hat. I, I have a question about Star Wars for George Lucas. Well, Am I allowed to ask? Yes, Star now's Wars. Time. Give me a New Hope. Star Wars Four. Uh, no, about Attack of the Clones. Okay, so. uh, which is um. Have you addressed why Anakin ages so quickly and Natalie Portman doesn't? Uh, has that been addressed? Yeah. She moisturizes and he has a growth spurt. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. and the and the growth spurt, if you want to get into the hard science of it, it has to do with the fact that he's, he's like so full of midi chlorians. Yeah. Like his uh, midi chlorian count is so high that did you ever see Jack? The with Robin Williams? Yeah. Yes. My my mentor directed that movie, Francis Ford Coppola. Mm. And uh and it sort of got me thinking. Yeah, a little boy can grow fast, huh? Interesting. That's George's favorite thing is when things that could take a long time happen very fast. Very fast. Mm -hmm. Like a ship. I Ooh. remember when Francis said, I'm making this movie is about Robin Williams. He plays a little boy who has a disease that makes him grow up very quickly. I thought, well, that's a storytelling shortcut that might come in handy. Now he can date his babysitter. He can marry her. He can marry his babysitter because he grows up so fast that nobody questions it. George was sitting there at the premiere of Jack with a notebook. I was he thinking put Jack on a date with Fran Drescher, and he went, this is going to come in real handy for Star Wars. I thought... 
I think I'm gonna use this in. I think I'm gonna use this in two. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lay the groundwork in one. I'm gonna have his babysitter show up, and uh, and that's his future wife because he has Jack disease. And it's but it's a long time ago. They didn't know it was Jack disease back then, so they just they haven't seen the movie Jack. Yeah. Did that answer your question, Heather? I think it really did. Yeah, it, it, I I feel like I'll never have that qu concern again. Like it Just, was completely addressed. I filmed a scene and it just looked silly where it showed him growing real fast. <laughs> where we had we had little Jake and I said, Jake, go like, ow! And I had a Hayden. And there was another poor guy, I don't even remember his name, who we cast to be like the middle. Just, I'm like, we'll only see you for a second. And he'd be like, ah, and he just grows up real big. I mean, this is, I mean, that's an idea. Again, if you want to use that for your rabbit show, uh, I don't know if you want to see how the rabbit gets big, but it's that's. He should get big, and then whoever that guy is in the middle should also appear at several frames of the animation. Yeah. yeah. So that becomes the entire concern. It's like, what was there like a little while where the rabbit was like a guy? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mill, do you have any questions for me? That felt really good to be able to solve that question. I don't have any offhand. No. No. So there's nothing. <laughs> you watched all of this. You watched all the Star Wars movies, Mill? You watched um, them all? I think I've seen them all. Yes. I think. I mean, you, yeah, you must have. That's the feeling you get. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure. And you, I, have, I, you had fun when you watched them. <laughs> Yeah, 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 sure, of course. All right, they're supposed to be fun. They're fun. Yeah, they're very fun. Can, I, can I talk to Bill for a second, guys? I'm just going to take you guys out really quick. Hang on one right. second. Bill, you think you had fun? Oh yeah, I had. Of course, I had fun. It you was got, great. No, no, it was you got to tell Bill, you got to tell George you had so much fun. Okay. Oh, sorry. Shit. Fuck. All right, we're gonna try it again. We're gonna try it. Curse on this. Gonna, shit. Yeah, you can curse. You can curse. We're gonna try it. Yeah, again. you can fucking curse. I had so much fun. Really? I really had. I did. I had you so like much them? fun. Yes, I oh, love them. I love them. I mean, like the only reason I didn't see them multiple times is because I wanted to the experience to be pure. Oh, yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to grind it. I didn't want to make it less special. That's good. So, so that's why I only saw them once, or I think I saw the first one twice. I think. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's. I wanted, not, I'm glad. Very much like it. I said, like like it stands alone as an experience in time, like like the American Graffiti, like the last night of summer, 1962. Yeah. Uh, it, it's an experience that I don't, I don't want to taint it right. by reliving it. Right. So I saw the movie once um, as a kid, yeah. that's it. Don't need to have that's it a it. second time. I'll, I'll admit to you, Bill, I've, I have, I've probably only seen all the Simpsons episodes once or twice each. Yeah, I'm up to thirty, but I, I I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I haven't. That's not. That. It's just because there's so many of them, Bill. You made they're made some. It's many okay. of them. I don't make any money when you see the episode more than once, so it's not necessary. I think right. it works differently in the film world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It does. But but also, did you ever buy a? Did you ever buy any toys, Bill? Star Wars did toys. Did you ever buy a Star Wars toy either for yourself or for someone else? Oh yeah, for someone else. Yeah. I definitely. get the money either way. It doesn't matter if you play yeah. with them or not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Then thank. Good. Then that's all. It yeah. really. That's that's great. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, that, the merch is the merch is everything in terms of like you got to get a piece of that. Do you have it? Do you have? Oh. Is, do you work on anything where you ever get a piece of the merch? Not anything successful. No. I mean, <laughs> it, it, when I create shows, yeah, uh, we do. I do have a piece of the merchandise, but none of them has ever gotten so successful that it resulted in merchandise. So you've never had any merch. No. Is there nothing that people could we could drive people towards your merch and get them to buy something and and <laughs> get that from that feeling? I actually am going to be selling merch uh, uh, in about a month. Uh, my new I have a new project that I'm working on. Merch um, March. Merch that is, and if you follow me on Twitter, you will see it's ba it's based. I'm going to make a line of uh, collectible vinyl toys that are what? funny in some way. Yes, if you like that kind of thing, <laughs> and if and you got a lot of money to waste. Oh. You're gonna love these. I'm gonna be yeah. like, I mean, yeah. let's look at a lot of I mean. right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, you're right. talking you're talking about the gambler with poor financial instincts who likes toys. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I can't uh, wait to hook you up. I like toys, Bill. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Do you yeah. know who 
I'll give you a million dollars if you can guess uh, guess the action figure that stands next to uh, Bartman on this desk. Uh, is, guess, can I get a hint? It's the is same it size. It, no, it's not a Simpsons character. I don't think... Uh, I, definitely not a Simpsons character. I don't think this person... Mm -hmm. I think uh, open this up to Heather too. Heather, I'll open it to Heather dollars. as well. Million no dollars. No doubt. Guess. You don't have to give a million dollars if you get it wrong. Yeah. I'm going to take a guess and say that it's uh, Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. Um, good. It's a good it's guess. Good. It's a good guess. It's not. It's not accurate. Um, um. Is this one of the things where I I I give you my guess and then you switch? The placement no, of the figures and no. you hold up Bartman hold again. And you're like, I will, I will, it. The figure, no, the figurine is in my hand right now. Okay. I'm going to write oh, and it all over. And I do not do. Yeah. George, I'm going to write it on my phone because I think I know what it is and that will prove it's the same thing. Right. Um, okay. okay. Go ahead, Heather. You can guess. I'm going to guess that it is uh, Odie from Garfield. Uh, mm. It's Odie. That's Odie my guess. from Garfield. Uh, it is not. It is not Odie from Garfield. Okay. I'm going to give you guys each a couple more guesses because I think. <laughs> I think. Give them one more guess, George. Give them one, one more. Guess. One more guess each. Yeah, it's a couple more guesses. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll, 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 I'm trying to think who is closer. Um, neither of you is closer. <laughs> It's not someone that you would expect. Like if you saw Bartman hanging out with this character, this person, um, it's a real person. I'll give you that. I, would the, say they've the I don't think person. he has ever interacted with Bartman. They have never Bartman. interacted. Yes, he's never interacted yeah. with Bartman. You'd be surprised. It would no yeah. yeah. And it would no longer be possible in the present to do this, sadly. So it's like a, like a Jimmy Carter action <laughs> figure or something like that. Like it's like yeah. a real yeah. person. That's, that's a good. That's a good. In a weird way, that's a good guess. I think. Okay. Well, then I'll <laughs> stick with it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say Roger Clemens. Uh, I'll say this, uh, Heather. You're closer. That no one has won, but you are closer in the sense that uh, both uh, uh, the the person you guessed, Jimmy Carter, was a part of the Marvel universe uh, in the <laughs> comics. Jimmy Carter existed in the Marvel universe, and okay. this person. Uh, played a character in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is Gary Shandling. Hmm. It's pretty good. Wow. Yeah. Hail, Hail Hydra. I, what? How did you... Patrick, how? I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Okay, okay. Had well, a... let's make... Let's make this a little more difficult. Okay, I have a figurine in my hand. Everyone gets one guess. <laughs> you just it's Watto right I'm, I'm gonna also say in, it's Watto I am also gonna guess that it's Watto <laughs> uh, Watto for me he's a little Watto <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great. This is a fun game. This is a fun game we we all play. Yeah, I don't I don't like fierce competitors here. I will say this. We didn't make this a part of the game, but I think since Bill and Heather got it wrong, I have to kick them out. I need to make what? them leave. What? I need to make them leave. No, you guys got it wrong. It's That was a part of the game. I'm sorry. Not, but you should have stated that up front if that yeah, was the case. Yeah, those rules weren't clear, but no. yeah, okay. This is the cruelest, this is the cruelest rule. rule. I, uh, Bill, Heather, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so sorry about this. It, yeah. it was fun while it lasted. Thank you, George. It was excellent. Right. Thank you so much. Bill, look forward to that merch in March. Heather, yeah. do you have anything you want to plug? Let's get plugs. Uh, follow, follow me on Twitter. All right. Yeah. All right. Heather plug. Campbell. Thank you so much. All right. You guys are the best. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Thanks for having us. How do I leave? I don't know. What am I doing? Do you, I, I just leave? leave? You, you, let's oh, figure it out. How do you leave? Uh, what? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm kicking me out. I'm kicking out, Heather. She's gone. Wow. Patrick is so Patrick. cool. He threatens to boot people. And they say, I'm ready to leave. How do I do it? And he says, it's on you. And then they go, okay, I guess I'll leave. And then he boots them. Yeah. Because that's, what, that's how he likes it. Yes. Yeah. That's how like I like it. it. Yeah. 
I have some great I have some great news. How weird is this Watto? It looks like a Watto sandwich. It is a weird Watto. It looks like a I s'more. It looks like a Watto s'more. Yeah, I don't well, understand the form factor. I, I understand. Yeah. I understand a Watto s'more because mm. when I watch the prequel trilogy, I always feel like I want s'more Watto. <laughs> oh, George. 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 That's a joke. <laughs> George. That, is, that is not a joke for the regular show, George. No, no, it's not. It's no. not. I mean, maybe you're it's right. Not. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I truly don't. I mean, Patrick. what? And Patrick. Yeah, yeah, George. Thanks. <laughs>